What's going on guys, Trey Lowell here, and today I wanna hop into Final Cut 10 and show you guys some tips and some tricks to taking a traditional flat background and manipulating it to making it something that you can sell for a profit. Coming up next. So over the years, I've found myself as an editor in several situations where a lot of people are looking for a very corporate look. Typically, just a plain background is not gonna cut it. So in today's video, I wanna jump into Final Cut 10 and show you a couple of layers, tips, and tricks that I use to bring a traditional flat background to life. So let's jump in. Okay, so at this point, we are pretty much got Final Cut open and we are gonna start with our custom background. Now that being said, we're gonna go into our titles and generators, pretty simple. Gonna go down to generators and we're gonna go to custom. That's the key, custom. Coming down into custom. Now traditionally, this is going to just be a black background, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this black background and try to manipulate it to make it something more unique than just your traditional flat black. Um, so I'm actually going to start with more of a gray or we're going to actually choose steel within Final Cut. So it's going to be kind of just a dark gray. Now this by itself is okay, but what we're trying to do once again is bring it to life. So I usually like to go over to the effects tab right over here on the right side of the screen and we're going to start typing in vignette VIG and we're going to click on vignette. And as you guys can see immediately, this is going to make the background that was just a traditional flat gray background kind of just pop. It makes the edges a little bit darker and I just like this look and I'll show you guys with a couple of other colors what that vignette does. We'll choose like a dark red and that's with the vignette and then we can take it off. So what would be your traditional red? Throw on the vignette, kind of makes it dark. It just brings it to life and makes it pop. Now. We'll go back to our steel. There she is. And that is with vignette, that's without, just so you guys can see. And I might even turn it down just a smidge. That's a full one, uh, 1. 1.0 on the darkened scale. We'll maybe do like a 0.8. So you can still see it's there, but not completely. Okay, so now that we've done our vignette, that's gonna be our first layer or effect that we're gonna add. And then another effect that I tend to like to add to backgrounds is going to be some kind of light, something to make that background almost seem like it's moving even if it's not. So we're gonna go into our effects and we're gonna go to light. And there's a couple of options here that I tend to like to float between. You've got the bokeh random, which is honestly just going to be like bokeh floating in the background. And I probably will use that, but we're gonna save that for a little bit further into animating this background. So at this point, one thing that I might float between or choose between is gonna be highlights. Highlights is going to just make your background pop. It's gonna have some lights kind of flashing all over the place. And when you first look at it, it's pretty intense, but we can manipulate that to not make it so strong. And then I also like to use the side lights option. It's a nice little touch, it's not overpowering. So for this case, I'm actually gonna just stick to the side lights, so we're gonna double click. That should drop it on there. Just so you guys can see, we'll quickly go over it. So that's what it should look like. I'm gonna come over to the effects tab over on the right, and right now the temperature is set to neutral. Sometimes I like to check between the three, the cool, the warm, and the neutral, just to see how it looks on that color scheme. So we'll go to cool should make it somewhat of a blue color. And I really do like that on this gray background. So the cool temperature might be something that I stick with. We'll try warm real quick. And warm is adding that orangish color to it, which actually does look nice on this gray background, but I think I'm gonna stick to the blue. So we're gonna go to cool. And currently the intensity is at 50, which is nice, but I am gonna turn it down just a smidge. We'll go to about 30. We don't want it to be overpowering. We want it to be nice and subtle in the background. So started with a gray background, as you guys can see right here, added a vignette, and then we added our side light and we'll play it real quick so that you guys can see nice subtle light that will just creep in from time to time. A lot of what we're doing here honestly is to have those side lights really not even be noticed that much just occasionally you see it and you'll notice the longer the clip the side lights might come in and out at different times but what i find is it usually just you want it to be very subtle 
so it's not disturbing to your audience, but it's still there. Okay, we're gonna pause that. So our next little layer that I like to throw on is a half tone. Um, to sum up what a half tone is, just imagine like little bitty dots. Um, that's what we're gonna add, and then we're gonna manipulate the dot size and the intensity or the opacity to kind of blend it into the background. So we're gonna come to our effects. We're gonna start typing in half for half tone. We're gonna double click. And as you guys can see, it immediately just bombards the entire, well, here we go. Okay, there it is. It completely enti uh, bombards the entire screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with lowering the opacity. I find that 30% lower is nice for blending with backgrounds. So we'll start at 30%, still overpowering, and that has a lot to do with the scale of the actual dots or the background. So it's currently at 15. We're gonna go down to 10, Usually I go in between 10 and 5, so it's not overpowering, but it's still a nice touch. There's 10. That's kind of a lot. Um, also, one thing you might want to look into is the contrast, because when you put this layer on there, it is going to manipulate the colors a little bit. So just to see what it does there, you want to actually turn the contrast all the way up. Maybe even see a little one. Nope, one won't work. Okay, so now it's bombarding the entire screen, and that's not exactly what I want. And this is a trick... I learned about a year or two ago, I'm gonna show you guys, and it's real simple, and you can use it for color correction, you can use it for halftone, side lights, you name it. We're gonna come up here in the halftone, and right next to the halftone in the bar, there's gonna be this little bitty rectangle with like an oval in the middle of it, and that is gonna be for masking. We're gonna do an add shape mask, and that basically is gonna turn it into a little bit of a circle. We're gonna come here, and we're gonna open it up a little bit, and what I'm doing right now is I'm actually feathering it. That way it's not so intense. I'm gonna bring it down into the corner and I'm gonna feather some more. So literally it's just creeping in or onto the screen just a little bit. That's what that tone's about. The vignettes looking nice. Side lights. Now the thing I am noticing about the side lights is that in some scenes it's gonna be really dominant and then in others it's not. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit more. Currently at 30, we're gonna to go to 15. And we're gonna take our half tone, still a little too much at 30% on the opacity, so I'm gonna lower it to 15. I want it to subtly be there, really not that distracting for people. Um, so real quick, show you where we started. Starting at gray, vignette, side light, half tone. Okay. Last but not least, we will throw some more lighting effects on there. And this is where we're gonna come back to the bouquet or the artifacts. I think I'm gonna go with the bouquet because it's not as powerful. So right now it covers up the whole screen. We're gonna do what we did with the halftone. Come up here, add shape mask, turn that into a circle, make that circle big, feather it out nice like that and then we're gonna pull that feather all the way over here so that it's just basically cutting off like half the screen so it's pretty much only gonna appear on half of this guy here still a little overpowering with the opacity being at 60 so we're gonna drop that down to 20 I don't want it to be too distracting actually let's go 10 I just want it to subtly be there as a nice little pop so there we go playing it back that's looking nice okay and then if we are going to add like a background or some kind of text, maybe even a person, we're gonna come in here, Let's see what I've got. We're gonna add a cutout real quick and we will just choose my boss. Oh, not that one, not that one. Uh, how about this one? Okay. So for reference, guys, this is my boss, Matt Kibbe. We're gonna throw his photo up there. And we're gonna make it a little bit longer. There we go. Position him over in the left-hand corner because I don't like how that is cut. Make him a little bit bigger. Pull him down. He's right there. And because he kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, we are going to do a shape mask on him, and the shape mask is gonna be in the effects tool. Drop that on him. What this is gonna do is we're gonna add a feather to him, and that way he's kinda of just lightly blends in to the side of this. And then if we were gonna do a quote from Matt, 
that says I love Final Cut will come to our titles over here in the titles effects we're just gonna do a basic title drop it right here and we'll come up here manipulate the title a little bit it says I love Final Cut Pro 10 all right one thing I like to do when I use titles sometimes I like to do all caps come over here we're gonna select all command a right click or double click on your mouse pad transform uppercase and then we're gonna change this to a nice font that I like maybe something we gotta go corporate here so we will do you know what we'll do din din is a font that a lot of people use din bold make this a little bit bigger come up here put it in that corner Last thing we're gonna do to make that pop a little bit more, we're gonna come to our titles and effects, or excuse me, our titles and generators, come down to generators, type in shape. And we're basically going to make a shape that's gonna go underneath the title to make it pop a little bit more. Putting it under, well, come on now, there we go. And there we have it. Currently a circle, come up here, we're gonna change it to a rectangle. We're gonna get rid of that outline. Sometimes that can look cheesy. Right now it's got a drop shadow on that, which is kind of nice. We're gonna change that color to, let's go with a dark green. We're gonna use that Lowell Productions green right there. Yeah. Put that here, make that shape a little bit wider. And there we go. Gonna have it come off the screen a little bit. A little bit there. Pull it over. I love SPX. And then we're going to take it, which currently the opacity of the shape is at 100. What I like to do is drop it down to uh, like 90 or 95, just so it's a little bit see-through. It tends to look good on backgrounds. We've got Kibby over here. Now you guys can see that background is moving. It's looking nice. Got the little bouquet over in the left. And what we might also do is drop another light on there and this one we might just do the highlights drop that on there so highlights are on they're pretty intense so we'll stick with neutral on that and we'll do like 10 now I'll play it back for you guys and there you have it now this is nothing special but we started with A plain gray background and within let's say 20 minutes or less you're able to add these effects BAM we'll start from scratch here showing you guys the gray and then we popped on that vignette we side lit it we threw on a half tone we threw on a bouquet and some highlights through an image of my boss on the screen through a shape with a title on there and as we can see the final product nothing mind-blowing but one thing it does is if you were doing some kind of presentation or looping background at least it's just not a stagnant flat color we're able to at least make it move if I wanted I could have my boss's JPEG or PNG file of him kind of just slowly scale in so that he kind of comes to life and starts moving I could even have our I love F CPX kind of scale up as well and then I could also have other things transition in and out literally it's just taking something that was flat and boring bringing it to life within Final Cut and everything that it offers and hey guys it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions and as always if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button if you like the content I keep creating on this channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video or tutorial Oh, come on. Are you really going to change colors on me? <sighs> and draw a cast. What happened to you?